हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक टू माय बायोलॉजी ऑनलाइन क्लासेस इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड विथ यू द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ डीएनए एंड सम फिजिकल एंड केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ डीएनए अकॉर्डिंग टू योर सिलेबस देयर इज अ स्पेशल टॉपिक व्हिच इज अमंग द फिजिकल एंड केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ डीएनए एंड दैट वन इज हाइपो and hyperchromic shift of dna uh, which needs a special attention as it is very much important as per your syllabus to discuss of this hypo and hyperchromic shift of dna so i want to request you uh, to please consult with uh, the famous watson and crick model which link of which uh, will be provided below please go through Uh, that lecture uh, it will uh, help you to um, understand this mm. this topic better first of all all of we know about watson and crick dna double helix model that it is a very stable nature so what points which is responsible for that uh, stabilizing nature of that dna double helix first of all internal and external hydrogen bonds internal and external hydrogen bonds stabilize the dna double helix from watson and crick model that the two strands of dna are joined by hydrogen bonds in case of a double bond these two are hydrogen bond and g c the triple hydrogen bond these are hydrogen bonds and uh, we have already studied that whole this dna double helix they are connected by this a and t and g c and hydrogen no. that this hydrogen bond is formed between the complementary purines and pyrimidines two h bonds are in at pair and three h bonds are in gc while the polar atoms of the sugar phosphate backbone sugar phosphate backbone if this is this is the structure then sugar phosphate backbone it is in the exterior side it is in the exterior side sugar phosphate backbone in the polar atoms of sugar phosphate back these forms external h bonds these are internal h bond these are internal h bond internal h bond and these are external h bond external h bonds with which external h bond with surrounding water molecule second so this is internal and external h bonds internal h bonds between atgc and external h bonds between polar molecule polar molecule of uh, sugar phosphate bond backbone with external water molecules is it clear that second point which is responsible for the stability of double helix is the core of the helix contains base pairs all of you know core of the helix contains base which in addition to be h bonded stack together through stacking interactions so the next point is stacking interactions stacking interactions these stacking interactions include hydrophobic interactions hydrophobic interactions and a combinations of van der waals and dipole dipole interactions and a combinations of combinations of van der waals and dipole dipole interactions between base pairs that contribute significantly to overall stability base stacking helps to minimize the contact of bases with water and the third point and the third point the negatively charged phosphate group are all situated are all situated on the exterior surface of the helix in such a way that they have 
minimal effect on one another and are free to interact electrostatically with cations in solution such as Mg2+. Okay, so these are three points for stability of DNA double helix. After that, I want to discuss with you about quantification of nucleic acid. Nucleic acid means DNA and RNA. Ultraviolet spectroscopy is used to quantify nucleic acid. Ultraviolet spectroscopy. So, a uh, feather touch, what is ultraviolet spectroscopy? When electromagnetic radiation passes through a transparent material, a portion of radiation may be absorbed. As a result of energy absorption, atoms or molecules pass from a state of low energy which is known as ground state to a state of high energy which is referred to as excited state. So, from ground state to excited state okay means low energy state to high energy state clear yeah. electromagnetic radiation that is has energy equal to the energy difference between excited state and ground UV visible absorption spectroscope based on the transition of electron from molecular orbital to another due to the absorption of electromagnetic radiation of ultraviolet and visible region. Here nucleic acid show a strong absorbance in the region of 240 to 275 Nm. 240 to 275 nm or nanometer it originates from pi to pi excited it originates from pi to pi this one is sign of excited sign okay pi to pi excited state positions of the pyrimidine and purine ring system of the nucleobases the bases can be protonated therefore the spectra of dna and rna are sensitive to ph at neutral ph the absorption maxima range 253 to 71 nm 253 253 to 271 nm here 271 cytidine and here 253 for guanosine okay and therefore polymeric dna and rna show a broad and strong near 260 nm mind it very carefully 260 nm 260 at these wave absorption is proportional to nucleic acid concentration absorption absorption is proportional to nucleic acid concentration nucleic acid concentration this relationship is so well characterized that UV absorption is used to accurately determine the concentration of nucleic acid in solution. The relationship between DNA concentration and absorption is linear. Absorbance at 260 nanometer is used to determination of nucleic acid concentration. Amount of nucleic acids are often as A to 60 units. A for absorbance, A to 60 units. For double standard DNA, 1A to 60 unit is equivalent to 50 microgram of DNA. 1A to 60 unit equals to 50 microgram of DNA. 50 microgram of DNA. That means a solution of DNA with a concentration of 50 microgram per milliliter will have an absorbance of 260 nm and for 
सिंगल स्ट्रैंडेड डी इट इज इक्वल वैल्यू टू 33 माइक्रोग्राम ऑफ एंड फॉर सिंगल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए इट इज इक्वल वैल्यू टू 40 माइक्रोग्राम ऑफ आरएनए नाउ लेट्स कंसंट्रेट अबाउट थर्मल डीनैचुरेशन व्हाट इज थर्मल डीनैचुरेशन व्हेन डुप्लेक्स डीएनए आर सब्जेक्टेड टू स्पेशली कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ पीएच स्पेशली कंसंट्रेशंस ऑफ पीएच टेंपरेचर और आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ और आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ थ्री पॉइंट्स पीएच टेंपरेचर एंड आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ दैट डिसरप्ट द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स एंड दैट स्ट्रांड्स आर हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स हियर आर द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स दिस हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स These hydrogen bonds will be broken, and after the hydrogen bonds are broken, the two strands will get separated, and the DS DNA change into SS DNA, no longer held together. That means now the double helix is denatured, clear, and the strands separate as individual random coils. If Temperature is the denaturing agent. The double helix is said to have melted. DNA denaturation is a cooperative pro denaturation process. Is accompanied by a change in the DNA's physical property. Denaturation increases the relative absorbance of the DNA solutions at 260 nm. Absorbance increase is known as hyperchromic shifts due to the fact that the aromatic base in dna interact via their pi electron cloud pi electron clouds when stacked together in the dna double helix because the ultraviolet absorbance of the bases is a consequence of pi electron transitions pi electron transitions you can remember pi to pi excited ground state to excited and because the potential for these transitions is diminished when the SS stack the bases in the dna duplex absorb less 260 nm radius than expected for their number the rising absorption coincides with strand separation and the midpoint of the absorption increased is termed as melting temperature or tm the temperature at which the ray in a260 is half maximal is called tm denaturation is also accompanied by a decrease in viscosity now let's draw about thermal denaturation here temperatures expressed unit degree centigrade and here along x axis absorbance at 60 nm is expressed here tm 85 this is thermal denaturation of dna the dna absorbs more ultraviolet rays at 260 as the double helix is denatured the transition is quite at the temperature of the midpoint tm is proportional to the gc quantity of the dna although the denatured dna can be denatured by slow cooling the process does not follow a similar curve renaturation becomes progressive more complete at temperature well below the t and then only after a considerable incubation time now let's discuss about factors affecting t point number 1 gc content 
जीसी कंटेंट डीएस डीएनए हुई था हाई जीसी कॉन हैज अ हायर टीएम देन डीएन देन डीएनए हुई था लोअर जीसी कंटेंट हायर द जीसी कंटेंट ऑफ अ डीएन हायर हैज द मेल्टिंग टेंपरेचर टीएन दिस हैपेंस प्राइमरी बिकॉज़ ऑफ हाई स्टैकिंग इंटरेक्शन एंड ग्रेटर नंबर ऑफ एच बॉन्ड टू बॉन्ड्स इन केस ऑफ एटी एंड थ्री एच बॉन्ड्स इन केस ऑफ जीसी वी हैव ऑलरेडी नोन दिस फैक्ट पॉइंट नंबर टू आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ Ionic strength. Tm is also dependent on the ionic strength of the solution. The lower the ionic strength, the lower the melting temperature. DNA is a polyionic molecule. The salt shields the negative charges on each phosphate. When the charges are not shielded, electrostatic repulsion energetically more favorable to separate the strand. Next point, pH. Change in the pH can also affect the Tm. pH values greater than 10 extensive deprotonation of the bases occur destroying their hydrogen bonding potential and denaturing the dna duplex similarly extensive protonation of the bases below pH also disrupt base pairing now let's draw finally the picture of the figure of hypo and hyperchromic shift Here, wavelengths in nanometer along x-axis and along y-axis relative absorbance. Here, zero zero point. Two zero point four point six zero point eight and one native DNA. Here, DS DNA native. Twenty-five SS DNA here SS DNA two degree centimeter Here it is denatured in almost eighty-two degree centigrade. This one is for native DNA, which is at twenty-five degree centigrade. This is hyperchromic effect. And this is hypochromic effect. Got it? Is this very clear? This is in detail. Hypo and hyperchromic shift of DNA. Along with melting temperature, quantification of nucleic acids, stability—it's all are related. Without discussing the whole things, one cannot express, one cannot understand properly what is actually hypochromic and hyperchromic shift of DNA. So stay tuned. Wait for my next lectures about RNA.